And today we're going to talk about the three basic configurations of a bipolar transistor amplifier. And those are the common emitter, common collector, and common base. And we're really just going to talk about the definition of these types, the configurations, basic characteristics, and typical uses of these types of amps, just as an introduction. So the first and most common type is the common emitter. Uh, certainly you, you'll see this most often. The input is applied to the base, the output is taken off of the collector, and the circuit has got a moderate to high input impedance. That's a good thing, meaning the circuit is not going to load down what it's connected to. It also has a moderate output impedance. That's not a great thing, but uh, we can deal with that. But it's got a high voltage gain and a high current gain. So the circuit I've got up on the board here is just a pair of resistors that sets up a bias voltage to bias up the base and then a set of resistors you know, for the collector and emitter which set up the current flowing through the device as well as the gain. Let's ignore this capacitor here for a moment and if we do that the voltage gain of a common emitter amplifier is typically the ratio of these two resistors so in this case a little bit more than three. So let's take a look at that up on the scope. So I'm I got the signal coming in from a signal generator, AC coupled into the input. I'm probing that with one scope probe. And then we're probing the output on the collector with another scope probe. So here's the circuit on the breadboard. This is the signal coming in uh, to the input here through the cap. Here's the transistor, the four resistors involved, and then that's the probe going off to look at the output. If we look at that up here on the scope, I can see there's uh, the input. Uh, about 100 millivolts peak to peak. The output is about a little over 300 millivolts peak to peak. And uh, you can see both of these are at the same voltage scale, 100 millivolts of division. So I can see that uh, I've got a gain of a little over 3. You also see that the gain is inverting. As the input signal is rising, the output signal is falling. So that's the characteristics of a common emitter amplifier. Its gain is inverting, um, and it can have some moderate gain. Now, with, if I bypass the impedance or the resistor that appears in the emitter, then the gain goes way up because now the gain is going to be dominated by the collector resistor divided by the dynamic impedance of the emitter. And uh, so the gain will actually be a lot higher. And uh, if we go over here to the breadboard and I take a capacitor and I bypass that emitter resistor, okay, so now at the signal frequency, that emitter resistor looks very low, it looks almost like a short. So now we're just working against the dynamic impedance of the emitter, kind of shown in the equations here, and the resulting voltage gain is much, much higher. So I'm going to need to attenuate my input signal here, just throw some attenuation in. So now I can actually see my input signals down here. I'll increase the scale on that. So I'm at 20 millivolts of division. Okay, so I'm a little more than 20 millivolts peak to peak. I can still see that my output signal is exceeding the scope screen here, so let's change the attenuation on that. So now it's say one volt per division. I can see I've got a little bit more than a volt, maybe close to uh, a volt and a half, close to two volts or so here on the output. So I've got a lot more voltage gain, about 20 millivolts peak to peak input, about two volts peak to peak output. So that's the common emitter amplifier. Again, very, very common for uh, uh, you know, almost all amplifier configurations you'll see that will uh, have something like a common emitter. The next most common one that we'll talk about is called the common collector. This is also called an emitter follower amplifier where the input is connected to the base but the output is taken from the emitter. And the, the characteristics here are that it has a moderate to high input, imp input impedance similar to the common emitter, that's a good thing. It doesn't load the circuit we're connecting it to. But it also has a nice low output impedance. That's a really good thing. It makes it easy to drive a load and not get affected by it. So, uh, so that's a good thing. But the trade-off is, is that it has no voltage gain at all. It basically just the input signal is followed at the output, or I should say the output follows the input. It just has a little bit of a, a DC voltage shift. So there's no voltage gain at all. But it does have a lot of current gain. So it's a good uh, buffer amplifier. So it can take the output from, say, a common emitter amplifier and buffer it so it can drive a load. So here's the circuit. Very similar to what I had earlier. I don't have a, a resistor in the collector in this case. So we're just you know, biasing up the transistor. And in this case, I'm taking the output off of the emitter 
inputs going to the base. So if we uh, go over here and move the output probe and connect that up to the emitter, if I take the input, connect it up through the base, I'm going to take my attenuation back out of my signal, and let's go rescale the way that we had things here before on the scope. So I've got 100 millivolts peak to peak, or excuse me, 100 millivolts per division on both channels again. And uh, so this is the output, this is the input. Now we can see two things. One is that the signals are now in phase, right? As one goes up, the other one goes up, and that they're both basically the same size. So the emitter follower or common collector amplifier has got a non-inverting unity gain. And that's the main characteristic of a common emitter amplifier. Again, often used as a buffer so that uh, we can take the output from a, maybe an amp that doesn't have a low output impedance, buffer it so it can drive another circuit very easily. Okay, the next amplifier type we're going to talk about is the common base amplifier. It's certainly the least common, but it is often used for RF and high frequency applications. Uh, the input is connected to the emitter, the output's taken from the collector. Now one of the features that kind of lends itself to RF applications is the fact that it has a low input impedance. That's generally not a good thing for an amplifier because a low input impedance implies that you're going to load down the circuit you connect it to, you know, when you're trying to amplify a signal. But in RF circuits, many times the signals we're connecting to are coming from low impedance circuits anyway. So, uh, so that's not necessarily a detriment when it comes to an RF application. It also has a moderate to high output impedance, uh, similar to the common emitter amplifier. It's got a high voltage gain like the common emitter amplifier, and it has a, about a unity current gain. As you can see, the uh, collector and emitter currents are virtually the same. So this is the circuit I've got on the breadboard, uh, similar to the other configurations that we've looked at already, except where we're connecting signals. A pair of resistors setting up the bias, you know, to bias up the uh, transistor except that I'm now bypassing the base with a capacitor so that from a signal standpoint this point looks like ground. The input is applied through an AC coupling cap in this case to the emitter. Uh, the input impedance is really dominated by the dynamic impedance of the emitter. Okay, it's also called you know, RE, a small little RE. And that can be quite small. It's dependent upon the collector or emitter current, but it can be quite low. Uh, but the gain can be quite high because that's essentially, you know, essentially RC collector resistor divided by that dynamic resistance is the voltage gain that you get out of this type of amplifier. So let's take a look at that here on the board. So that's this final configuration over here. I'll take the probe that's going to the output and connect that to the collector. I'll take the probe that is carrying the input signal and probing the input signal and connect that to uh, this input capacitor here. Now, because I've got such a low input impedance, I'm going to move my probe that is actually looking at the input signal. I'm going to move that and connect it right up to the emitter. Okay, because I'm getting a, you know, the, even that, that low input impedance, I'm going to get a phase shift due to that cap. So I didn't want to show that on the scope. So now I've got these things up on the scope. Let's go take a look at what we have. So the input signal is actually sitting here. It's kind of quite low. All right. The output signal is swinging past the the inputs or past the scope uh, display. So I'm going to change the scale. So now I'm at 200 millivolts of division. So I've got, uh, say, 2, 4, 6, 8, about a volt peak to peak at the output. And the input here, let's change the scale on that. So let's look at that here. That's probably about 20 millivolts uh, peak to peak at the input. So you'll see that um, this type of amplifier is non inverting. Okay, a voltage increase at the emitter also causes a voltage increase at the collector. So it's a non-inverting type of amplifier, uh, but also can have a substantial gain. So that's what the common base uh, amplifier looks like. Now often for RF applications, you might find a common base amplifier being fed by a common emitter amplifier. And, uh, and there's some reasons for that as well. Uh, one of the other reasons that makes this a good RF amplifier is it uh, gets away from or helps to minimize the effect uh, in a common emitter amplifier that limits the bandwidth. And that's something called the Miller effect. And uh, you know, any device has got some capacitance between its terminals.
the base collector capacitance is generally what limits the bandwidth of a common emitter amplifier in, in most cases because there's an inverting gain you know across that capacitor so the capacitor appears larger than it really is because the signals are moving in opposite directions around that cap uh, that doesn't happen with a common base amplifier because there's no gain voltage gain that's appearing here so that capacitor doesn't get multiplied by the gain so by basically taking the output of a common emitter amplifier and driving the input to a common base amplifier you get what's called a cascode configuration which extends the bandwidth and gives you all the advantages of a common emitter um, but uh, without uh, the disadvantage of rolling off the gain at high frequency so anyway, I hope this little tutorial gave you a better understanding of what is meant by a common emitter a common collector or a common base amplifier what the configurations look like and when they're typically used. Thanks again for watching and appreciate all your comments.